you go from that in 2001 and then in 2003, what's widely regarded as one of the greatest finishes of all time. I know that you've been asked about that day a million times, but you've got a picture of the finish hanging on the wall behind you. When you see that picture, yeah. what do you see? What do you think of? Well, there are times where I think to myself, not, not very often, but there are times where I think, all right, what if you hadn't gotten hurt? Uh, could you have won a title? I feel, and I felt before my cups, uh, in 1995, I remember thinking to myself, if I could stay healthy, if, you know, all things being equal, I should have double digit wins. And that, that was predicated on my desire and my determination and also how well I had run at a number of tracks in the Bush Grand National Series that were in the Cup Series. And so, you, you know, it's easy for me to say now, I reflect on Darlington and I say, well, I am regarded as a two-time Cup winner, plain and simple. That's, that's all I am. I am a two-time Cup winner. But I don't think Darlington weighs equal to some of the other tracks. You know, in my own world, in my own twisted way, I say, you know, but it's Darlington. <laughs> and when you look at the list of drivers who have won at Darlington, you say, the track too tough to tame. And it takes me back to the first time I walked into Darlington in 1992 and i said what in the hell have i gotten into <laughs> you know it's like nothing nothing in new england prepared me for that and ron miller as he did so many times said came to my rescue in 1993 i didn't run well in 92 and uh at darlington and i think that uh how well you do at a track is in large part determined by whether you like it or hate it right and and i and i was leaning toward hating it and uh and ron introduced me to david pearson and david pearson took me around in ron's van in 1993 and i gave him the utmost respect for the most obvious reasons i mean he's one of our icons and I was so skeptical. I never would, I, I wouldn't admit this for years, but I was like so skeptical sitting in the passenger seat and listening to him describe, all right, he'd stop the van and say, all right, what are you doing here? And I said, well, I'm still full throttle. And he goes, really? And he goes, okay, I want you to start lifting right here. And I was, I was skeptical because I was like, all right, I know he's the greatest ever to compete at Darlington, but Mr. P I'm saying to myself, Mr. Pearson, it's been a long time since you've raced. And so then I say, okay, sir, I understand. And I, and I made a mental note. Uh, I have a marker on the track of where he said I should be lifting. And we go down into the corner, and he says, what are you doing here? Maybe another, maybe another 250 feet. And he goes, what are you doing right here? And I said, uh, I'm probably going off the gas and onto the brake. And he goes, oh, God, this is easy. He said, this is going to be easy. He says, remember where I told you to start to lift? And I said, yes, I have a marker. And he goes, so right here, I want you going back to the gas. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, we're, I said, we're, uh, so I said, we're entering the corner. I haven't even gotten to the apron yet. I said, we're entering the corner. I swear to you guys, I swear to you. Two hours later, I sit on the pole in the Bush Grand National Series, 1993. Look it up. I think Ward Burton was outside pole. I'm not kidding. Yeah. I win the Darlington in a large part because of the things that Dale uh, David Pearson incorporated in my head, but also because it played to my driving style. I was so good with my feet. You know, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart, Rusty Wallace, throw the car around. I was not that kind of driver. I might've been 
prior to my wreck in 97. I might have been a little bit of that. But I was really good at preserving tires, managing my, the pedals. And, and uh, without David Pearson's influence, I don't get that win. And, uh, and ultimately, that's what it came down to. It came down to a David Pearson mentality with 20 laps to go, and I'm like seven or eight seconds behind Kurt Busch. And Kurt Busch being that, that kind of guy that throws the car around. You know, it just – Earlier in the day, Kurt Busch went three wide under, I think, Jeff Gordon and Elliot Sadler and took the lead. Like, it's, you, don't do, you don't get away with that at Darlington. You know, Darlington, the track, philosophically usually slaps the hell out of you for, for making a three wide lead path, a three wide pass for the lead. Uh, but that's how Kurt drove. And he was brilliant on that day. Uh, but I feel like he forgot where he was racing and he just burned the tires off the car and, and, uh, and I was just soldiering on.